So this is where I am. This is where I go to spend time with God sometimes. Hello everybody, God bless you guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I think I did do a little intro in my first clip but nevertheless, welcome back guys. It's a beautiful day and I just want to come and share with you guys. So I recently asked a question on my YouTube, uh, what is it that you guys struggle with the most concerning your spiritual journey, your prophetic journey? What is it that you struggle with the most? So I'm going to be sitting and talking to you guys. I found that in the past I have done a lot of teaching and though this may still be teaching I want to share with you uh, not just teaching but I want to do empowerment I want to do you know encouragement inspiration that you guys can know that you're not alone because I've seen several comments that persons who are coming into the prophetic has shared that they absolutely feel alone no one understands you you don't know who to talk to you don't know what to do and so this is why I decided let me start doing more of these videos where I can share with you guys so I want you guys to like the video if you find it interesting and leave the comments in the comment sections let me know if you guys would like more content like this at the end I'm actually going to give you guys a little walkthrough of the area so you guys can see my beautiful you know surroundings and outside is beautiful I think you get the best of me when I'm outside and I'm in nature as a prophet you have to find something or somewhere that gives you life that um that re-energizes you that puts you back into a place of you being centered you becoming one with god again and this is what i do so the first thing is um, how do i manage everything that i do so i am i am a mother I am a teacher, I teach courses, I am a pastor, I am a wife, I do YouTube, there is business outside also that you know you guys don't know about. So there are so many things on my plate that I do. But the one thing that has kept me, um, you know, being driven, being intentional, and I'm not perfect, I'll share that with you guys. But the one thing that has kept me in a place of being driven and motivated is, and sometimes I lose my motivation. I have to find that one thing that keeps me going. But the Bible does say that to who much is given, much is required. Because I know that so much is required of me from God, it keeps me going. And so there are days where the workload becomes hectic. There's work, there's family, there is the church. There's so much that going on that sometimes if you're not careful, it will get you into a groove of doing things robotically because you have to do it and not because you are passionate about doing it. So one of the things that I've always wanted is to serve God, not because I have to, but because I want to, because I love him. What I don't want is I don't want to get lost in, you know, being, for example, I'm a pastor. I don't want a pastor because it's a job. I treat it like a job, which means I have to be punctual. I have to show up when I don't feel like showing up. I have to prepare and, you know, all the works that I have to do. So I treat it professionally. But on the other side, if I only focus on the professional side of it, then I will lose out on doing it because it, it fills me, because it motivates me. It's what gives me life. And it's the same thing like marriage, you know, and having kids. You don't just get up and you make breakfast for your kids every day you're cleaning the house every day so your husband comes home to a clean beautiful home you're not just doing it because it's a part of your job description it's something that you should do but you're doing it because it also makes you happy you're doing it because you love them some days you become so tired as a mother that you don't even want to get up and you know make breakfast for your kids but it's not just that you have to but it's because you love them and you know if you don't do it who else is going to do it but the second thing and the most important thing is because you want to do it the same thing applies for god 
finding consistency and remaining intentional about seeking God and spending time in him to grow in your spiritual gifts, to grow in your relationship with him, to grow in understanding, you know, your calling, your ministry. It first has to come from a place of relationship. And that's, I guess that's the point I want to drive home to you guys. Relationship is key. Where there is no relationship, anything that you do is going to be a struggle. Consider my husband and I, for example, if he and I do not have a relationship, me cooking, me cleaning, me doing the laundry, me doing everything else, it's going to be a strain. It's going to make me miserable. It's going to make me frustrated. It's, it's going to put me in a state that I don't want to be here. I don't want to be doing this. But because I love him, it's a joy for me to cook. It's a joy for me to clean. It's a joy for me to go out and buy him stuff. It's a joy for me to do whatever I do because I'm in love with him. The same applies for God. Guys, when you are in love with God as a young prophet, and I don't want you guys to be so frustrated. So many of you guys are so frustrated with your calling. You don't have to be frustrated in your prophetic calling. See, the frustration frustration helps you to the frustration is really what keeps you wanting more of God. When you become frustrated in your spirit, it is because there's a greater dimension in you. There's a greater place in you that wants to be filled, that wants more of God. But when you're frustrated because you're not growing at the space you at the speed you want to grow, you're not seeing certain results, you still don't know what your gifts are, you still don't know what your purpose is. Guys, these are things that we simply do not need to worry about. What should matter the most? Is your relationship with God because out of your relationship with God it springs up life it springs up purpose your relationship with God will literally birth out your purpose your giftings and all of that and if you have a relationship with God as a young prophet he's going to talk to you he's going to tell you things about your own life and he's going to furthermore tell you things about other people's life the Bible says that I am the vine and ye are the branches and whatever branch it is that is in God, it must bear fruit. If it doesn't, he's going to prune it away. Because you are a branch that is connected to the vine of God, you are attached to the vine, which means that ultimately you have a relationship with God. And the fact that you have a relationship with God, he's going to talk to you, which means you shouldn't struggle to hear the voice of God. What you should, what you should desire is a relationship with him. And I think that's what many young prophets don't understand. They do not understand relationship. When you come into a place of wanting to grow your spirituality with God, your ultimate goal is not, you know, you just want to hear the voice of God. You just want to hear him. You just want to see in the spirit. You just want to know what your gifts are. It, you know, it makes it come across as you want the things of God, but do you want God? But if you are intentional and your main priority is you wanting God, you wanting more of God, you wanting your relationship with Him, your gift, your purpose, your ministry, your calling, your assignment, your mandate is all attached to it. And so I just want to encourage you just to take the time to build a relationship with God. As you begin to build a relationship with God, it can, it can lead to what is called isolation. And I want to choose my words very carefully because I want to help you guys. So this is encouragement and I suppose it is also teaching. I've seen many persons saying that they're struggling with, you know, being lonely as a young prophet. But my question though is, is it that you're lonely? I want you guys to put it in the comment section. Are you lonely? There's a difference between being lonely and there's a difference between being in a place of isolation. If you guys understood the reason why God sometimes strip people from you, then you would understand why it seems as though you're lonely, but you're not. So sometimes God will, I hope I'm not all over the place. Sometimes God will pull you into a place of isolation because he wants to spend time with you. He wants you to learn him. He wants you to learn his voice. He wants you to learn the presence of God. And sometimes when you are accustomed to the 
be in a space where there's so much noise there's so much clutter there's so many voices there's so many people that's in your space sometimes it can take away from you know you hearing God in the way that you would want to hear him and so it's not that you're lonely in fact sometimes we should begin to give God thanks that he did take away some people from our lives because some of these very same people that are in our lives are the same people that would not understand our calling the same people that would criticize us the same people that would mock and jeer us you know why are you leaving your job to go into this prophetic thing and you know what's how are you gonna pay your bills sometimes God stripped us from people that would mock us jeer us misunderstand us you know the people that would want to fight against us the Bible tells us in the book of John he says a prophet is without honor except in his own country being in your own country is not just a physical place that you were born and raised in. Sometimes it's just not being around the people that you are familiar with. So your own country doesn't speak about a physical place. It actually speaks about familiarity. It speaks about being around people that are familiar with you. And so sometimes God strips us down to not having friends and family around us. Not because he wants us to be lonely, but because he wants to protect us. Because another thing is, when you are around the very same people and say they don't understand you, say they're mocking and jeering you, it brings you so much pain because you will not expect this to come from the people that you love. So sometimes God isolates us to protect us. Sometimes he isolates us. I mean, all the time. He he he's either isolating you to protect you he's either isolating you he's either isolating you to protect you to prepare you to process you and to push you out to give birth into what you want see when a seed is buried it's the only seed that's in the soil it's away from everything else it's in the soil all alone you are a seed you're in the soil all alone was something else there's something else i wanted to share with you guys you're all alone in the soil all by yourself there's no one there it's like you're dying and the bible says unless a parcel of grain or a seed falls to the ground and die it cannot reproduce which means that sometimes god has to isolate us in a place where we're all alone when you're in a place of you know silence of isolation you learn the voice of God and you don't have a million and one other voices telling you something completely different so then when you hear God's voice you are sure that this is the voice of God that is talking to you and there's no confusion so sometimes God isolates us you know just to process us to know his voice he he, he isolates us to protect us see understand that for man it is difficult man thrives on companionship and association however when you come into the prophetic and even ministry in general it's the other way around and i'll say for many ministers if we can be honest that for many of us our circles are very very small and the truth is the smaller your circle is it's the better it is for you so sometimes god isolates us into a in an isolated place and this is where as i mentioned before he protects you he trains you he grooms you and he also isolates you so that when he matures you into the prophetic because i suppose that some of you may think that you know when you're in the prophetic and you're mature and you know your gifts as everybody wants to know their gifts maybe you guys feel as though when you know your gifts and you're in ministry the fullness of ministry that it's all going to be a bed of roses it's going to be okay no ministry is a lonely road if God has isolated you in this place of preparing you and you're sad and frustrated and you feel lonely because no one understands you, no one is there to encourage you, no one is there to pray with you, how will you manage ministry? Ministry is a lonely road. In ministry, there are so many people that will want to fight against you because they're jealous of you. People don't want to be with you because you're growing too fast, you're doing too much, you're too anointed they're comparing themselves they're jealous of you they just don't want you to grow and there's so many things there's so many byproducts of ministry and not all of them their pros and their cons not all of them are good not all of them are good another thing is with isolation he isolates you early so he can prepare you for ministry 
God isolates you early, not makes you lonely. So, hold on. I'm getting a call. He isolates you so he can prepare you for ministry. When you go into ministry and you start to prophesy and preach, not many people are going to be with you. Not many people are going to agree with you. Not many people are going to support you, especially when the prophetic word that God is giving you goes against their beliefs, their tradition, their religious system, their man-made laws and regulations. People are going to hate you for it. When you start calling out sin, when you start telling the people, the Lord God Almighty says you need to repent. Not many people are going to want to be around you. I was literally talking to my husband, you know, um, driving in to film. Today's a down day for me. I have class tonight, but it's kind of a down day. I don't have a lot of sessions. So I use these days to film. And I was saying to him, you know, I wonder, I have 15,000 followers and subscribers on YouTube. And I was saying, you know, I could have probably had 50,000 or 100,000, but why do I have this amount? And he said to me, if you were on YouTube and you were, you know, dressing in the cleavage and the booty shards and you were doing the utmost, you know, exposing yourself, revealing your body, doing the, the utmost, you would have had so many more views, so many more people, you know, commenting and, you know, wanting to subscribe to your channel, but you're not doing that. See, what I'm doing is I'm teaching things that people don't want. I'm teaching things that, you know, not many people will want to sit to learn. Not everybody wants to learn. Not everybody wants to hear about God. People want to, you know, live the life where, you know, you're learning about, you know, hair stuff makeup stuff clothing the parties not that not that you know makeup and hair and that stuff isn't bad in fact i've thought about including these things on my channel sometimes but not many people will sit and subscribe to you know a teaching and a, an elevating teaching that will aid or assist you spiritually so not everybody wants this and as i said if i were doing something else i would have so many more followers it's the same thing for you not many people will understand you not many people will gravitate you because you're not like everybody else many people pray god i want you to anoint me do you know what the word anoint means someone go ahead leave it in the comment section do you know what the word anoint means to be anointed means to be set apart it means god is literally taking you from out of the crowd and he's setting you apart over there where you're far from everyone else so what everybody else is doing you can't be doing the same thing the fun that everyone else is having you can't have the same fun you know the old things that everyone is doing you can't be doing the same thing i talk to my husband all the time and I say to him, I'm 31 years old. I want a friend. I want to go to the movies with a friend. I want to go, you know, to grab a cup of coffee with a friend and a sandwich. I want to, you know, go get my hair done with a friend. You know, just to go out sometimes. But guess what? I don't have that. I have nil, zero, zero. I have no friends. It's just my husband and just my son. And that's it. And that's completely fine. I have grown to accept being alone and that being alone does not mean that you're lonely it means that you have god and when you build that relationship with him you learn how to become intentional because you love him see when you're married you just want to get home to be with your husband when you have a newborn baby and you love that child, you just want to spend time with that child. Always snuggling the child up, always hugging him, always giving him smooches. Because you love the child, you want to be around the child. When you love God, you want to be around God. You don't have to schedule time to be with God. You don't have to try to set time apart to be with God. You don't have to always set your alarms to be with God. If you're struggling, you can, which helps you to be intentional. But when you are in love with God, there's no struggle to spend time with him because if you don't get to spend three hours in prayer with him before you go to work that's fine do not let anyone tell you you must do three hours of prayer every single day to whom much is given much is required there will come a time where god will place that grace on your life that you will spend three hours five hours in prayer with him but if you're not there but you are in love and you're passionate about god you want to grow your relationship with him you're taking a shower and you're praying 
Hatai, Zukele Brahasaya. You're driving to work and you're worshiping and you're loving God. You get five minutes off from between your clients in work and you're in the bathroom, you're at your desk, you're reading a Bible passage, you're just worshiping God. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You're worshiping him. Every second you get, you're worshiping God because you love him. What you need with God is relationship, not a robotic relationship where you have to do things and it seems like a chore. You can love God anywhere. You can pray and worship while you're in the gym. You can pray and worship God while you're doing the chores. And if you feel that your kids are an issue, your kids are not an issue. Worship God with them. While you're giving them a shower, worship God with them while you're making their breakfast their dinner and they're watching the cartoons that's your moment to worship god and to pray to him every second you get your worshiping god stop beating up yourself about your relationship with god relationship should not be a fight if you have to fight it it doesn't make sense if you're fighting to love that man you're fighting for the man to love you it doesn't make sense when you love love flows freely do you see that fountain right there? When you love, it just flows freely. I'm going to walk you guys up there and I'm going to show you a fountain. I'm going to show you how the fountain flows and this represents the love that God has for you. It flows freely from God and it flows freely out of you. So let me give you guys a walk and in this walk, I'm going to show you what the fountain looks like and so you will have a more vivid um, representation or image of what the love of God looks like, which means that your relationship with God should be free flowing should flow up order you freely smoothly easily because you're in love with God I do hope that this was good for you guys and it has blessed you so I have some downtime what I'm going to do now I'm going to show you guys the fountain and I'm actually going to sit and I'm going to schedule out my days that's something that I do as well so let's move further down there and I'm gonna show you guys how I schedule my days how I remain consistent and did I tell you guys how I remain consistent I don't think so but let's 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 just move this scene and then I'm gonna show you guys some stuff all right so let's go so beautiful So let's talk consistency and relationship a little bit more right so i think many people don't know what love is and what relationship is and that's an issue in order for us to understand relationship we have to understand love when you love someone the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son when you're thinking about love nothing is too expensive nothing costs too much nothing takes too much time it's just something that you're willing you're absolutely willing to do and so then with that being said your communication with god it may vary and it may differ in the same way and i'm comparing relationship with god you know with anybody else so for example there are days where i go to god in prayer and i sit and i'm talking to him there are days also where i go to god and as opposed to praying i'm writing a letter to god so someone recently gave me this beautiful little um diary thingy it has a whole box and stuff and it opens up it is so cute so cute thank you auntie marie for this so sometimes what i do is this i just go to a quiet place and some of you may be saying you know you don't have quiet place or you know when you have kids and multiple kids you don't know what peace and quiet is sis wait until them kids fall asleep or you know whatever the time it is that you can find as i said um you know just find some time and sometimes your relationship where god is concerned is it's not just prior you know it's you talking to him in your own way so i got this cute little you know what do you call it bookmarker to mark wherever i am i think it's a bookmarker absolutely think so so and the pen is so cute i don't know if you guys can see it literally screws off like this <laughs> so cute 
sometimes I just go somewhere and I literally, I just write letters to God. That's, that's all I do. If there's something that's too difficult for me to say to him, I'll write you a letter. I'm just writing a letter to God. I, you know, I'm telling him how I feel. I'm telling him what my day was like. I'm telling him what my struggles are. I'm asking him, is there anything you want me to change? So sometimes you have to take some time and write a letter to God. You know, write about your day. Allow God to write. One of the marvelous things that I experienced on Sunday, Sunday we were at church and the Holy Spirit had instructed me to tell the people to write their vision on in their part journal and write your vision and make it plain and here's the funny thing i told them to pray i felt the presence of god before they wrote i felt the presence of god so heavily and i told them to write right before they started writing i saw two angels literally enter the church the two angels and in many cases i see angels i don't know what their names are but i know that they're there and i know what they've come to do this time the two angels i saw their names were hope and purpose i was odd they were they they honestly kind of resembled like a young like a young like say for example how do i put it like a young man but they did not have a physical body but they resembled or they had the image of a young man very beautiful angels and their names were hope and purpose and when they came in the realm of the spirit I saw them looking and taking a note of everything that was written and you know the Bible says that you know um, there's a golden bowl in heaven where God collects the prayers of the believers like incense and as the people were praying I saw where the angels went around the church in between the aisles of the church and they were looking at what the people were writing and they were taking notes of everything that was being written and when I saw it I was so amazed which means sometimes if you don't even know what to say to God because you're struggling if you spend the time and you're writing it even God will send angels to come and take a note of what you're reading and go and literally report it back to God so today I'm encouraging you to find some quiet time find a space that you know you can lock yourself in and go ahead and write and talk to God he sees he hears did you forget that God sees everything that God hears everything he could read in the same way he can listen to you pray if you write he will also read it god can read yeah that's i i make corny jokes sometimes um that's fine so as i said um i do hope that this teaching has you know helped you or encouragement has helped you if you need more content like this please make sure you go ahead and comment in the comment section what is it that you would want me to talk about what is it that you want me to teach about and i'll absolutely do it for you guys I pray God that your presence will surround me that your presence will surround me father you created this beautiful you created this beautiful landscape you created this beautiful earth I believe that your presence is all in creation that your presence is with me so I pray that you will cause your presence to be felt help me to know that your presence is here help me to know that you are with me always help me teach me how to love you in the same way that you love me wherever i struggle god help me to become perfected where my struggles are where my inconsistencies are where my failures are where my flesh is taking control where my mind is taking control where my emotions are taking control i pray that you will step in god and that she will help me help me to be consistent help me to be consistent 
Help me to be purposeful. Help me to be intentional. Help me to find the time to love you, to seek you. And when I seek you, I pray that you will be found in me, oh God. Father, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised, God, and there is none like unto you, God. You are awesome in all of your ways. You're mighty in all of your ways. You are beautiful, Jesus. Father, I love you. I exalt your name. I adore your splendor. I adore your beauty. I adore your majesty, oh God. You reign higher than any other God. There's none like you, Jesus. You are amazing. I have a beautiful father. I have a wonderful father. I have an amazing father. But father i ask you that you will teach me to be a daughter teach me to be a daughter teach me to be a daughter one that desires the presence of her father one that desires to know her father's voice one that desires to know her father's ways teach me your ways teach me your voice teach me your presence Libro koto zente le braha sadi ketu raba shadia. Mandele beko sada raba ha. Leda baha shoto ziba ba 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 ha. You are worthy to be praised, Father. So I'm about to show you guys the fountain and what it looks like to be loved by God. As a young prophet or as a prophet, I want you guys to put in the comment section what is it that. Or where is it that you go to spend time with God? What is it that brings you peace? Where is it that you go? And when you go there, you hear the voice of God clearly. I want you guys to put that in the comment section. Um, for me, anywhere where there is quiet, it's a quiet place. Anywhere where there is, you know, the ocean, that's where I go to hear God and spend time with God. Yeah. So this is where I am. This is where I go to spend time with God sometimes. This is it. So this is it, guys. This is it. This is what the love of God looks like. And I think about God and his unconditional love for me. I think about rivers of living waters, fountains of living waters that just flow unconditionally. When I think about my love for God, because we want God to love us, but do we love him? One of my prayers in this season is for the Holy Spirit to teach me to love him just as how he loves me. And when I think about my love for God, I'm thinking of rivers of living waters or fountains of living waters that flow up from within. The Bible says that out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. Let's say fountain of living waters. It means if your love for someone is flowing, you don't have to fight it. You don't have to press it. It flows freely. And if you have that love for God, finding time or making time to spend with him in prayer making the time to pray making the time to write letters to god with prayers making the time to fast making the time to study the word of god it should flow freely and by saying this your kids are not an excuse your husband is not an excuse your job is not an excuse because sometimes we have this notion that i don't have the time we are now in a time consuming you know space where you have work you have kids you have a husband you have ministry you have so many things going on i want you to love god when you love god spending time with him is not a chore it's not robotical it's not something you have to do it's something you want to do so in the same way that you would spend time with your spouse because you love him you you're at work you can't wait to get home to see your spouse you can't wait to get home to spend time you know with your babies and you know your kids because you love them it's the same thing with the holy spirit there's a love there's an unconditional love that flows from within so when it comes to prayer and spending time with him it flows freely so my prayer for you in this season is that you will not struggle to spend time with god you will not struggle to pray you will not struggle to fast you will not struggle to hear the voice of god because there's a free flow of the holy spirit i feel that one i feel that one in my spirit there's a free flow of the holy spirit that is flowing from the heavens above and it is flowing from your heart build back your relationship with god build back your intimacy with god 
everything else will pass away but the love of God will never fail you can lose your job today you can lose your house today you can lose a family today God forbid but you know there's one thing that you'll never lose there's one thing that will never leave you and it is the fountain of ever flowing waters and love that comes from the stream of God love Jesus just as he loves you I'm Pastor Beckford signing over today God bless you guys and have a wonderful rest of the day